Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Cabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Troy Casey, welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I am so stoked to have you here, brother. Let's just dive right into it. So for people that aren't familiar with your work, you know, on Instagram, you are the certified health nut. Can you just give us an overview of your journey these past, I believe it's been 30 plus years in not just health, but really I'd love to lean into the spirituality and how you went from being a Versace model right? And to yeah. certified yeah. health nut. I mean, man, to just hear that, like a Versace model in Milan, I think it was somewhere like that, right? I uh, yeah. didn't really know that stuff too well. But now just being the certified health nut and speaking your truth as it relates to mind control and building the new earth, if you will use that term, this, these type of stuff, um, I'll hand it over to you to let us know about your journey. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, and, and that's a great question. Let's see how, uh, I can, uh, quickly synopsize it without going, you know, too deep. So, you know, uh, we were discussing you're in Santa Cruz. I, uh, grew up in, in, uh, Marin County as well, part-time. My parents were hippies. So I was in the state, uh, the Hay Haight Ashbury district of San Francisco in the sixties. And so, um, my parents were free spirits. They thought differently. And I was back and forth to uh, Connecticut as well. So East Coast, West Coast. Um, so I, I grew up there and uh, my parents had some challenges um, with the law, you know, mainly with marijuana, which is now legal. Right. And so uh, and I know there's still a lot of marijuana being grown up in Santa Cruz County as well. And so, uh, yeah, Northern California is really where Sense Amelia was grown and blossomed uh, after the Mexicans uh, uh, invented it. And so, uh, and that was the 80s, right? That was the early 80s. And so, uh, so my parents had some challenges. So I ended up on my own uh, at a very young age. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I graduated from Novato High School. And, uh, and then um, I was on the fast track to nowhere in college, right? Uh, I'm an intelligent person and um, I put myself through school and um, I, I was incarcerated as a youth for the last uh, uh, months of my uh, uh, until I turned 18. And uh, so I read a lot of literature and I really brushed up and graduated high school with, with uh, good grades and got into college very easily. And, and uh, but I didn't have a bunch of math. So I had to do go backwards and do a lot of math. And so I was in college kind of just three and a half years, not, not really advancing. And people kept on telling me, Hey, you know, you should be a model. And I knew nothing about the industry. And then I started, I took some pictures and then a big agency opened up in San Diego and I was going to school at San Diego at the time. And so, uh, I aced two semesters of Spanish just before I started modeling. And then I moved to Italy, which helped me conjugate my verbs and, and, uh, and speak Italian while I was there. And so, uh, you know, I grew up, on American standard American diet or didn't really know anything about nutrition and Captain Crunch and pop tarts. And I had, you know, asthma and bloating and indigestion and really knew nothing. And when I started modeling, I started paying more attention to my diet. And then, uh, I used to bloat and the agents were really ruthless in that industry. And they're like, honey, you're fat, you know? And I'd be like, well, I wasn't fat yesterday. 
So I went down to the American bookstore and uh, bought a book on nutrition and started reading it and started eating more fruits and vegetables and shopping at the farmer's markets in Italy. And that's kind of the beginning of Certified Health Nut. I started getting into herbal medicine, internal purification, nutrition. Um, that was 33 years ago. And so, and then uh, since then, you know, I had a lot of success uh, as a model and worked in Tokyo, Paris, London, New York, Miami, really put Miami on, on, on the map, uh, through the nineties. Um, and so, uh, and so, uh, then I got into a lot of trouble drinking alcohol partying because it goes hand in hand with the modeling industry, drugs and alcohol. And, and, uh, and, uh, I had a lot of free time on my hands. And so, uh, I partied, you know, quite extensively. And then eventually I had to reel that in. And, uh, I, I started going to AA, um, and, uh, you know, that's what basically is commercially available. And uh, some of the things I liked and some of the things really bugged me about that um, uh, community. And uh, But one thing that really stuck with me was step 11 through uh, prayer and meditation. You know, you saw a deep, deeper meaning or however the step goes. And so, but there was always this je ne sais quoi with the guys that would speak about step 11. They talk about this meditation stuff. And I'd be like, wow, these guys have something special and unique that's kind of outside of the rest of the AA speak you know? And, uh, mm -hmm. so I paid attention to that. And then, um, I soon moved to Los Angeles to start an acting career. And, uh, I still had my ups and downs it took me about four and a half years to completely sober up from that party lifestyle. And, uh, it was Vipassana meditation that really set me free. Uh, was able to sit 10 day courses in silence and, uh, went very deep and it really helped me. And from there, um, somebody turned me on to, uh, uh, the Maori healers from New Zealand, these spiritual healers that, that uh, came from New Zealand once or twice a year to Topanga Canyon. They use sticks and stones and they step on you. And I'm like, wow, you know, like sign me up. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I had a huge awakening working with them. And then I started working with an herbal company. I'd been studying herbs ever since uh, I was in Milan and uh, studying like detoxification and fasting. And uh I loved herbs and somebody turned me on to this, this herbal company from the Amazon. And I started putting these plants into my body and I was like, wow, this is the next level of consciousness. Like I had a Kundalini awakening and uh, energetic awakening inside my body. And uh, that was about 1999 through 2005. And then um, I had a trip to the Amazon. I started drinking ayahuasca. And so um you know, had very powerful experiences down there. And I had three powerful visions. One was an amalgamation of my on-camera career as a model and an actor, uh, um, interconnected to my natural medicine studies and the certified health nut was born in the Amazon. I laughed out loud right in the middle of the ceremony and everything's been unfolding ever since. That's 2006. I posted up my first YouTube uh, videos. I was doing stand up comedy at the time. So my first video on YouTube is called laughter is the best medicine. And oh, so and I, I, see that. I encourage everyone to, to, to watch that. And then after they watch that, then they can watch uh Yerk from Uranus. Uh, Yerk is spelled with a J anyways, uh, Yerk from Uranus. <laughs> and that'll be in the show notes. I'll get that link from you. And uh, guys, you can check that on the show notes for laughter is the uh, the best medicine. What was the next video called? You said Yerk from Uranus. Yerk is Yerk. with a J. Okay. We'll get those and they'll be in the show notes. Please his name, continue. His name's <laughs> Jerk. His name's Jerk. Jerk from Uranus. <laughs> Anyways, so that's my style of humor. And then uh, recently I just did uh, a Netflix show with Chad and JT Go Deep. You can find that on uh, Netflix, Chad and JT Go Deep. Uh, episode five, Stokers Unite. So I got to play all the certified health nut shenanigans out into uh, Hollywood. It was it was it was it was such a great experience. And so let's just so that's, take a moment. Let's just take a moment to honor that uh, Stokers Unite. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so that's kind of the first vision that I've seen. And certified health nut continues to unfold to this day uh, and is doing really really well. And so. Uh, and then my second vision was, uh, my daughter came to me, the spirit of my daughter came to me and I wasn't married. I wasn't in a relationship. Um, I had, 
I, I think I always knew I wanted to have a family and ha have children, but I, I, I just wasn't in the market. And actually, when I came home from the Amazon, my, my intention for going down there was to connect with the divine feminine and all of its facets and uh, to open up my heart. And I got just what I bargained for. And so when I came home, you know, I asked a bunch of the women, you know, I was uh, either dating or friends with, you know, hey, you interested in having a family, children, or <laughs> you want me to knock you up? <laughs> and so, and most girls, this is LA, right? They're all into it for their career and stuff. And they're like, not me, like I'm clear. And, and so, uh, and I was, uh, I was, I, I had become friends with this, uh, this one woman and uh, we ended up uh, having children. My daughter was the second child to come along and that's been unfolding, you know, ever since my family. The third vision I had in the Amazon in 2006 was um, that humanity makes it from the precipice of ecological disaster and, and really just the absolute oil-based economy, slavery, petrodollar, you know, nonsense that we see in ge geopolitics and whatever wars are plastered all over the internet uh, and or not the internet, but, you know, media as well. And so, um, so that was my final vision. And, and so I, I came home and wanted to put that to work and my mission and my legacy that, that I have dreamed up from my heart's desire currently is to raise human consciousness. So use the media and the gifts that God has given me to get attention. And then once I have people's attention, you know, you take care of your own personal real estate, body needs nutrition, body needs water, water should be pure, body needs sleep, body needs movement you know, basic fundamental principles. We're in relationship. We need sunlight. We need grounding, electromagnetism, basic fundamental principles because 70% of the American people are obese or overweight. One and two are metabolically dysfunctioned. Uh, uh, nine out of 10, I'm sorry, <clears throat> are metabolically dysfunctional. And uh, one and two will have cancer. So obviously I have a job for myself to do. And the health of the human through the law of correspondence, natural law, uh, as above, so below. How do we expect the world to be healthy if we are not healthy ourselves, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually? If we're shitting in our proverbial spoon and shoving it in our mouth or shitting and, and putting toxic chemicals in the waterways and the soil and the airways, then how is that beneficial for our overall upliftment, our overall uh, rising to, to consciousness. We're lowering the consciousness uh, by making people ill. And so my mission is related to my own survival, uh, if you will. My legacy is related to my own survival. And so that's my template for how I live my life. And so I get out there and give people as much uh, entertainment, edutainment, entertainment uh, as possible to inspire their souls to clean their own side of the street and uh, live a more balanced, harmonious, peaceful life. So we can all live on this wonderful spaceship together. Yeah, brother. I love it. Yeah. And I love that you use the word balance. The message that came through for me for the first ayahuasca ceremony I had was this message of soul life balance. And that's been my thing kind of, uh, looking at yin yang feminine masculine whatever type of archetypal energies we want to look at but reprioritizing ourselves first let's go to the visions in the medicine space because a lot of people listening are newer to working with plant and earth medicines and i think sometimes a, a vision or an experience in a ceremony can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. What is your take in terms of discerning the messages that come through in a medicine ceremony? Well, I think, you know, don't quit your day job when you get home, you know, uh, when you have those visions of the angels or the demons or whatever, you know, I think it's a good idea to move your career and potentially get out of a toxic and bad relationship but come home, work with an integration specialist, work with your own meditation, make sure that the decisions you're making are based in reality and helping you move forward uh, uh, to the best of your ability. Because, um, you know, people can also go crazy if the world doesn't match up to their visions or the utopian, maybe the ideals that maybe they experienced in a psychedelic journey. 
So again, back to balance, all the ancient sages have said, walk the razor's edge, balance, you know, um, and yin and yang are the two forces that are guiding us, masculine, feminine, inhalation, exhalation. So we're never resting on one per se, we're balancing. And so, um, so take whatever visions, ideas, uh, discoveries, introspection, um, with a grain of salt and keep going deeper, right? The invitation is always to go deeper. Um, and it's been said psychedelics or ayahuasca, it's only 50% of the work, maybe less, right? It's an impetus to shift and to change. And so um, for me, I, I, I did quite a few experiences uh, with the ayahuasca, about 30 inside the Amazon. Then I spent six years prior to that sitting Vipassana courses. So I sat 11 courses in silence. So I had a basis, a spiritual uh, basis, ballast kind of to go back on, not getting high on my own supply. Because I think one of the worst things you can do in your spiritual journey is get on your uh, proverbial high horse. Whoop, I've arrived. Woo! Yeah. You know, you see that, yeah. you know, pe people get some Kundalini underneath their belt, or maybe they even go as deep as becoming a Hare Krishna or whatever, you know, the bottom line is, 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 you know, we're always, you know, elevating and understanding at, at a higher level. And then we have to integrate those understandings because we live in the third dimension. There, there's a ancient, you know, uh, 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 Zen moniker that says, uh, chop wood, carry water before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water after enlightenment. And so you're still going to have to provide for yourself, provide for your family, stay nourished, stay balanced, because we can come to these spiritual realizations and then we can get out of balance again. I think we've, you know, we've all had friends and possibly seen that uh, in our world and so, or in your community. And so the idea is not to get too high on your own supply. You know, obviously psychedelics are useful for dismantling the ego and then come back to some reality so you can harmonize that into a newer lifestyle that's, you know, more balanced with, with peace and harmony that, you know, that's more of my mar monikers uh, or markers is, you know, how peaceful and harmonious uh, can, you know, how much of my life can I create that in a disharmonious discordant world. And so um, as things are a little out of balance and, you know, maybe we say that we're sitting in the United States of America and some very, you know, high demographic areas. But the fact of the matter is, is there's four generations living in the street in India. And you don't live in Iraq. You don't live in Syria. You don't live in, you know, all, all sorts of places. So, you know, my idea is that uh, high tides rise all boats. And so uh, I believe the world is abundant instead of the scarcity model that we're sold and that we can create uh, a better world with clean air, water, soil, and equitable systems for all mankind um, and move in that direction. And uh, I think we're, we're not there yet by any means, but at least the consciousness from a small percentage of visionaries and people that really get it are calling forth this new earth, right? And so um, we just got to break some eggs to make a souffle, uh, if you will. And so, and I think it's being created right in front of our face right now, but the old systems are, uh, dismantling themselves they're crashing down yeah agreed with all of this and i definitely want to transition into mind control in just a second here you know for my own awakening process and what i've seen with a lot of my clients being an integration guide is that the number one constant does seem like it's a career transition is living for most people not everyone but a lot of us it's kind of like okay maybe this isn't in, in alignment but with that as well is just this crumbling of our belief system and everything that we've known to be true, whether it's existential or more grounded, maybe grounded, maybe not. It's also existential with the mind control. So I'm going to hand it back over to you because uh, you mentioned some of this in Ed Britton's uh, men's group, the, well, the Wild King that I was in. And I'd love to share this with the listeners of this podcast as well. So take the floor with mind control. I'm here to listen. And so are we. Yeah. So, so again, I just want to finish with the integration, uh, definitely change your, 
your day gig if you have to just don't come home and do it immediately work right. with someone that can help you integrate it and so so when it comes to you know mind control let's look at the etymology of the word government for example uh, to govern is to control and ment comes from mente mind mind control and so and then we look at edward bernays and uh he wrote a book called Propaganda in the early 20th century and invented public relations. So everything that we see with psychological marketing, television advertising, you know, we had doctors smoking in the 40s and the 50s in magazine advertisements. Also to get uh, Betty Crocker, you know, going and all these uh, these processed foods, you know, uh, Betty Crocker wasn't selling and then they figured, oh, well, crack an egg into it and then they'll seem like they're cooking right and so it's mind manipulation control and that you know that was the 40s and the 50s when advertising you know really kind of began there was radio before that and then there was there was you know magazines and then uh uh tv and now what you see with tv is pharmaceutical drugs erectile dysfunction or even death. Yeah. Ask your doctor if this is right for you. And then they have the clouds and the children and everybody's fluffy and sexy or enjoying their adventurous life. But you got to take this pill that's going to give you, you know, erectile dysfunction or even death. And so that is really the height of where we've gone is just complete control. And then you find out about the news and Operation Mockingbird and the news, even when they say, you know, uh, Red meat is bad for you. Uh, heart healthy diets, vegetable oils are good for you. Uh, butter is saturated fat. You shouldn't eat that. You need more grains in your diet, heart healthy grains. And then you find out about Kellogg's and the owners of General Mills and they were eugenicists. And, uh, um, and then how do you fatten up an animal to bring it to market? You feed them grain. And so, you know, years later, what do we have? We got 70% of the American people that are obese or overweight. And it's all scientifically validated, right? Straight from the, the, the news media and the advertising. It's like, this is the greatest thing for since sliced bread. It's all good for you. All the chemicals? Oh, FDA approved. It, 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 don't worry about it. It's negligible. It's not going to affect you whatsoever. Really? 70% of the American people are obese or overweight? What the hell is that? That's a mutated human. <laughs> that looks like a mutated human. You go back to the old pictures from the 30s, 40s, 50s, even the 70s, and you didn't even see obese people. Now everybody's obese or overweight. And then you've got one and two as cancer, diabetes epidemic proportion. And so all this stuff is all scientifically validated. Well, there's a prime example of mind control. Even talking to people on the internet, I've been doing this for two decades now, almost 20 years. I'll be talking about sleep or something as simple as water, right? The body's 70% water. Um, the, the, the brain is, is, is 90%, right? So talking about water is probably a good idea. People will literally ask me, are you a scientist? Do you have any scientific proof for that sleep, right? Who, uh, are you a doctor? You know, I'm, I'm, and, and this is mind control. Why? Well, because... let's, let's pause there. Let's look at your background with not only medicine, but, but Vipassana as well. I believe you've um, done some certifications in like yoga as well, right? Or at least a background breath and prana and all that, like it's lived experience. Well, that's all self-taught, right? So um, all my breath work in yoga, Ashtanga, any of the yoga that I've done over the years is also, uh, I've gone to classes, but never teacher training. Uh, and then I've just practiced. My thing is all about practice. Uh, yeah. The the certificates that I, really, you know. Correct, which which yeah. is the real certificate. And, and, and my, my uh, um, in, in my book, it's that's the real certificate. That's, you know, I have no problem with taking off my shirt at almost 60 years old. And, 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 you know, that's my certificate. So the bottom line is, is uh, I'm a graduate of the Czech Institute, the holistic lifestyle coaching uh, program, uh, all the way up to level three with Paul Czech. Uh, I'm a good friend of Paul Czech. I've studied uh, uh, his literature, his videos uh, for many years, but not only studying that and having a certificate, I don't even know where my certificate is, but the fact of the matter is, is, my body is a living testament to the Czech Institute and what pa Paul Czech teaches. Me standing on the ball in, in my book, Ripped at 50, this is Paul Czech's legacy is that, is that Swiss ball, you know? 
And so, uh, and then that's the body of my dreams that I desired all the years that I was modeling, that I was trying to get my nutrition on point and get my body on point. I was able to integrate and put together through Paul's systems. Paul really put it all together. I had studied plenty in the Amazon. I had studied nutrition. I tried fasting and I did yoga, but uh, putting it all together, especially the gluten piece and soy and uh, I was vegan there at, uh, at a time, you know, many, many years ago. And Paul helped me put it all together. And again, it's, it's not the Czech Institute certificate. It's uh, who and what I've become and whatever fit, fitness level and cognition that I have at this moment. Yeah, a hundred percent. Totally agree with that. And, and that um, picture of you standing on the stability ball, uh, ripped at fifty with your shirt off. Yeah, that tells it all for sure. Absolutely. What else on um, Edward Bernays and mind control? Kind of going past um, health. Like, is there other stuff you'd like to share? Well, I just think that the mind control. Look, the battlefield currently is on. You know, the human mind. That's where the battlefield is fought right now. And you're seeing this with wokeism and everything that happened uh, in 2020 um, with the lockdowns and the masks and all that stuff. This, this is uh, the mind control. And uh, Hitler knew this. He worked with Joseph Goebbels uh, and propaganda was so important. They studied with Edward Bernays, who was Freud's nephew. That's the point I didn't make before. Wow. The reason the psychological advertising you know, it works to this day, right? I talk to my marketing guys, uh, uh, scarcity, um, fear of missing out and urgency. Those are, things are critical to move the needle forward uh, in, uh, you know, uh, offering programs uh, and, and pricing and packaging to, to everyone. And so there's also plenty of other fear tactics that are used, Um but scarcity is huge. And what do they do on the news? It's all scarcity. We don't have enough water. We don't have enough oil. We don't have enough manpower. We don't have enough, you know, we're running out of money. You know, we're running out of housing, right? The housing crisis, right? <laughs> These are all manufactured, right? To get to move to control people. In Rothschild's autobiography, he says it matters not who writes the laws as far as government he who controls the currency controls the people so controlling the currency also controlling the food the water how the transportation that's what stalin was up to control the transportation the movement of people you control the people completely and so so we have to watch this because you know you see what happened in 2020 all during lockdowns and all that stuff this is a totalitarian tiptoe a, a takeover the the un agenda 21 talked about this since 1992 now it's un agenda 2030 um as a marking point for the 21st century which is what un agenda 21 standed for you can look all this stuff up on the internet it's all factual information now they have the world economic forum and they're trying to put everyone in digital prisons in smart cities and and the mind control is what's it's what's corralling people. It's normalizing dysfunction, gender dysphoria, gender bending, uh, race baiting, pitting men against women, feminism, divide and conquer of the family, separating the family, be a boss bitch, you know, toxic masculinity. These are all designed to break down the culture, break down the society. Men traditionally have um you know aggression anger power testosterone 10 times the testosterone as a female and it's good that men get angry because if you are raping and pillaging the children or poisoning the commons then someone needs to get enough energy up to say cut that fucking shit out right and so mm -hmm. But of course, we've labeled it toxic masculinity because they want everyone docile and weak so they can just take over. And the Matrix is an incredible analogy. Um, Carrie Ann Moss from uh, uh, the Matrix trilogy, her name was Trinity in the movie, uh, she gave an endorsement for my Ripped at 50 book. She's a Waldorf oh, wow. mom. Our, our children went to school together. And so uh, 
And it's been said that Keanu Reeves has said that that book is a, uh, that movie is a documentary. <laughs> not, yeah. not, so is Bill not, and Ted. <laughs> right. another, he's done some oh. spiritual movies for sure. Yeah. And, and these things, and if you look at Hollywood, it's all predictive programming in plain mm -hmm. sight. Dark forces know that if they put it in plain sight and then people consent, comply, conform with their own free will, well, tough shit. This is a free will universe. That's why it's time to wake up. Don't consent to anything. Don't comply. Your birth certificate and your uh, social security card number is traded on the New York Stock Exchange. You should look that up. It's like we are part of a system that we've got born into that it we are coming out of right now. There's a ton of people working on uh, common law and understanding of how the systems and maritime law works out of the Vatican, um, the, the financial district and the military, the mi financial district of London and the uh, military district of, of Columbia, right? Which is the United States of America. We're the military leg, the enforcers. Maritime law is coming out of the Vatican. And uh, I don't claim to know all of the information there, but the bottom line is, is this is slavery. And no one's free until we're all free. And the central banking systems is keeping everything in place. There was only $660 billion worth of paper before 2008 housing crisis. My mother lost two houses um, in that time. And my mother didn't start working until 1979. Feminism with Gloria Steinem, who worked with the CIA, was 19. 73. And so she didn't start working until 1979. It was a hobby. Now at 76, she has to work every day just to survive. You know, how, how is that that we take care of our elders like that? How, what kind of system is that? You know? And so, and so then the, the, now there's, there's $660 billion worth of paper in the history of the federal reserve, which is a, um, which is a corporation no different from Federal Express. It is not part of the federal government. People don't know this either, right? And so, so uh, now there's like $27 trillion in circulation. What does that do? That devalues the currency. It waters it down. It makes it worth less, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so, you know, it is a great time of awakening that we are here. We don't use this for doom and gloom. We use that as awakening because you are an extremely powerful being. We're all knowing, self-healing children of God. It is time to arise and to awaken to our own spiritual power, our own spiritual energy, that there is something deeper inside of us. And so my clarion call to everyone is, Clean out the vessel, take care of this own personal real estate, stay as balanced as possible, raise your frequency and vibration, fill up your cup so you have something to give to serve others. I mean, Sam, you're doing a great job doing this uh, yourself. You. You're, you're helping other people wake up. And that's all we're doing here is the spiritual influencers on the internet. And you see many fitness influencers or even so-called health influencers they're still creating businesses. It's really just a business. And part of the business is still a slave game. And so, you know, there aren't a lot of people that are truly helping and serving other people. I do understand that, yes, you have to be successful um, in this world and you do have to generate uh, cash flow to survive in this world. Yes, I do understand that. I practice the principles of uh, success and the science of getting rich by Wallace D. Waddles. These are excellent spiritual tools. However, I'm not motivated by money. I am motivated by helping my brothers and sisters and elevating human consciousness. And so I must become good at business in the matrix to survive and to get my job done. And so I utilize the tools. But what you're seeing on this inter on the internet is you're seeing a lot of fake people, right? You got You got all the young guys on steroids saying, hey, this is fitness, buy my program or my, you know, nutritional diet plan, etc. And so, and, but they're lying and they're baiting and switching people, right? And so you see that with the liver king as well. But, you know, I'm eating liver, buy my liver All supplements. Right. Yeah. And he's on $12,000 worth of drugs every month. Or are these marketing and sales gurus, like get rich quick schemes on the internet and, and, uh, 
uh, you know, drop shipping on Amazon or sell solar, you know, let us train you in that. And it's, and it's all this bamboozlement. Everybody's trying to coach each other. And so, and most people are, are coming from an empty cup. And so um, I truly believe that authenticity is the new currency as we rise mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Authenticity is the new currency. That is so gold. And I feel like I, yeah, yeah. Maybe I've heard you say that before, but I need to remind myself that I think a lot of us need to remind ourselves that. And in terms of how we show up, it's on social media, coaching programs, all these things. In my experience, because you probably don't know this about me, um, I was named Silicon Valley's 40 under 40 list uh, the same year I first drank ayahuasca. And that's what led to my numbing depression, like not being able to receive that and having a million dollar company while working less than four hours a day, like yeah, everything I was working towards, right? And in the past four years of doing this journey, man, it's been tough for me to navigate, you know, because now trying to find a way to step into helping other people, but not going back to my old ways, my old toxic ways for me in the regard to how I show up in building a business. Because at the end of the day, like we, to your point, we are still building a business and we need to be responsible. And it's not that we're trying to get rich. And I'm, I'm saying we, as in you and me, I'm not speaking for everyone because unfortunately there are, are a lot of people where it just feels like they're capitalizing on the mental health trend. And, you know, I had to just look at this for myself a few days before we recorded this where I got into public speaking about a year and a half ago, speak on mental health in the workplace. You know, I don't speak about plant med medicine or psychedelics. I speak about soul life balance. And I think of it as like a Trojan horse model. And I've started to see so many more people kind of step into that realm, whether it's mental health in the workplace or psychedelics in the workplace, or just all this stuff and me stepping into integration coach. And then what I was feeling was that limited state of that fear of like, oh, not enough. And then I had to come back to be like, no, fuck that shit. This is what I want. This is the world I do want to live in. And I think this is the most important point when we're getting beyond the mind control, right? Whether it's getting lost in the narratives that the government, CIA, FBI, all this type of stuff, right, is putting out there to keep us in that stuck state. I think a lot of people, when we're early on in the spiritual journey, we can get caught in that and then just get stuck there in that kind of, it's a different level of fear, right? It's the gloom and doom you spoke about. So my question for you is like, what is your recommendation on how people can navigate uncovering the truth, but not getting lost in it so they don't stay in that fear of the doom and gloom and can rise above that without just like putting their head in the sand? I know that's a long-winded question. Yeah, I might have you rephrase it, but ultimately, you know, let's just say this. I think from Plato to Descartes, all the... Uh, you know, high level philosophers the, have said the ultimate truth is I am here right now. I mean, that's all we can say. The past doesn't exist. The future hasn't happened. And so um, that is the ultimate truth. So who are you right here, right now? Ultimately, it's, you know, it has to do with with being. So that means that everything else is conjecture, opinion, hypothesis, theory, including, I do believe, uh, two-thirds of all Nobel Prizes in science get overturned within 10 years as we discover more information, hmm. right? So if we're understanding that, then all you can really do is deepen into the present moment. And I'm not saying that that's easy. I'm not saying that I've mastered that. But it's a good general principle because there's so many people on the internet, they're looking for the truth, right? The truth, you know? And so, uh, and what we're seeing with, with Israel, there's many sides to the truth, right? And so, but all as I can say, when people ask me about Israel, like, I really don't know what's going on over there, right? And so there can be a bunch of news stuff, but I have come to find out that the news is full of shit, 
right? And so, uh, and I do hear that there's uh, this side and there's that side, but I also know that the bankers have been funding both sides of the war since Napoleon. And so, and if you look at what happened in Hotel Rwanda, for example, they, uh, they gave weapons to both of those religious factions. They did a little divide and conquer element. And then the, the human beings just killed each other. Well, what were they after in that area of the world? Well, there's a Sudan crude uh, there. There's diamonds, there's gold, there's tungsten, there's cobalt. And when you have the natives or the locals that are all up in arms and fighting each other, <laughs> then the Halliburtons and the Bechtels and the big construction and the Terex Titans, and they can come in there and excavate all the natural resources right out of Africa, right? And so, so I think the, the greatest thing really to understand is the truth of who you are. You know, all knowledge is knowledge of self. I, I, I call my online platform Knowledge of Self University. And so all knowledge is knowledge of self and the ancient sages have said, walk the middle path. So who, who am I from the inside, I think, is the, the masterful look at consciousness at the same time trying to balance the outside, as we talked about before, with the economy and living in the world and running a business, et cetera, and then coming back to that deeper honesty. It sounds like you worked in Silicon Valley and maybe you liked or didn't like what you were doing and maybe you want to do something a little bit different. That doesn't mean you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I hated the modeling industry and I thought it was soulless and I thought it had a lot of sexual games and debauchery and um, um, those powerful elements. However, I still use the gifts the creator gave me. I still work in front of the camera. I Luckily now I'm living part of Steve Jobs legacy, which was to give every man a handheld computer so he could change the world. Right. And so, so I'm living that legacy while I'm while I'm living Steve's le legacy while I'm living my own. And so, uh, and these things, if you look at yin yang and there's two forces guiding us constantly, you know, Apple and their user agreement and how detrimental these cell phones can be to the human bio, uh, biosphere, you know, there's yin and yang to all of this. So you stay balanced, you know, I keep this phone away from me as much as possible. I work on it every day. And then I keep it away from me as much as possible and stay as balanced as I possibly can. So it's constantly like being in the world, but not of it. You know, you know how I, yeah, I, I totally agree. I love that all. And since you brought up Steve Jobs a couple of times in Apple um, and we were talking about ayahuasca visions, there's a few years ago, I had multiple ceremonies where Steve Jobs came through and it was, and I'm not saying this is factual. I, I'm prefacing that this is just the experience in the medicine ceremony and how it felt to me, the multiple times this came through was that he manifested his own illness and death because of his role in society of everything that you just mentioned in terms of the, the toxicity of the having a cell phone in our, uh, our back pocket or fanny pack or wherever it's in our hand, whatever it is. And the thing is, yes, there's so much good for sure. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we have cell phones. I think it's amazing. And also, right. And we can see how that has leveraged to apps and social media comparisonitis and kept us so much more limited. And I've believed that the reason why that message came through was because it was shining a light on how I show up in business and asking myself, am I truly in integrity? Am I in alignment or am I out of alignment? So, you know, there's a piece of me that has this story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it has a story that on a subconscious level, Steve Jobs didn't really have conscious awareness to it but he felt it in his body and he wasn't Paul check type te teachings, right? He wasn't listening to the whisper and those whispers turned to screams and it manifested the illness and ultimately his death. And that's, you know, just a story. I don't know if it's true or not. Well, I think death is part of life, but uh, I definitely, you know, I like Steve's, you know, legacy. He definitely thought different and he brought something 
dream sure. the impossible dream. I mean, this is what I teach my clients, right? If the Wright brothers can fly like an eagle and Steve Job can put these devices in everyone's hands when everybody told them they were crazy, that shit fucking crazy. And that's that's what it takes to be a visionary, right? Steve Jobs wasn't the designer, wasn't the engineer. He was the visionary. It's like it's like Kanye West as well. You can argue with him that he's this, that, or the other thing, but he's a multi-billion dollar man. And he's created many, many things. And so, and that's what you get, you know, as a visionary, you you borderline that genius insanity element. And it can be tough shit. No wonder the sweetness came out of his life with the pancreas, pancre the pan ca the cancer of the pancreas. And so, uh, you know, fighting an upstream battle, I've had some challenges uh, recently as I've become more successful, you know, people stealing and stuff. Could you imagine creating Apple and then having them take it away from you? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. No, yes and no, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's the world is a very, very interesting place. And that's why I, you know, I say stand and be counted. I, my second book is called Brave New Man. And uh, it's almost finished. And it's all about facing yourself and standing, be counted, because we have the power of the creator in us. We have free will. And so I think the, the powers that be, the people that own the media conduits, they want to weaken you, think you don't have any power. And they're programming you, right? But we come back to the essence of who and what we are and stand and be counted and declare that. Uh, sound effects matter. You can literally speak into existence that which you wish to see. And so we can never forget that. So call forth from your heart's desire. It's going to be, it's going to be more balanced and harmonious as you pull it out. Now, you see what we do with Raytheon and Northrop Grumman, and we can create inner, inner ballistic missiles and death machines. We can do that, right? If that's your mission, you can create that as a business or you know, you can go out there and conquer the world and kill, maim, and, and, and kill people, right? That is the possibility here on planet Earth. Paul Cech likes to call that God, right? That's unconditional love. There are no conditions. So if you can do all that negative stuff, just imagine over here what we can do with all the positive stuff. Mm -hmm. I choose to see a world that, that is thriving with good air, water, and soil. This is an amazing world that we live in. People are moving towards the direction of augmented reality and 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 uh, virtual reality. Have you ever been snowboarding in a fucking blizzard, man? It's like having those goggles on and fucking snowboarding down a mountain, right? Snow's coming to you. It's like, why do you need a goggles for virtual reality when you have fucking reality? Yeah. And that's all I was getting to with the Steve Jobs thing. Like I so have so much respect for him and everything else, but that's kind of what I'm saying. He did play a major role in transitioning us to this more virtual reality and just, it, just being stuck in scrolling mode and everything else. And it could have been something, I don't know. I'll let that go. Um, you know, before we wrap this up and this has been awesome and there's so, I feel like this is just like a getting started, you know, we could pull at any one of these themes and have a great conversation. But before we go, I want to get into your, your health uh, drinks information. I've seen you post about it. I've heard like whispers about it and I don't f know for myself uh, your whole offering. And I'm actually super interested for myself. Um, and I know a bunch of people listening would be interested as well. So could you tell us about your, I'm just going to call it your drinks. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah. I work with an organic superfood company and uh, I know uh, your friend, uh, um, Evan, and mentor Eben, um, I took him through the cleanse recently, and he's also sharing that with his audience. So you can definitely connect more with him uh, and get a discount code from him. But I've been working with David Sandoval's superfood company for the past decade. Um, I had an affinity towards herbs, started studying them 33 years ago, worked with that herbal company in the Amazon, and now I've been working with Purium, David Sandoval's company. So organic superfoods, he's formulated about 75 herbal and superfood products. So we have everything for from zinc aid. And these all come with uh, filler, binder, filler-free, binder-free, excipient-free, no artificial coloring, no artificial flavoring, no magnesium stearate. 
There's no junk. When it says other ingredients, it's usually just the capsule that it comes in. And so uh, um, our superfood drinks, we own organic farmland on volcanic ash beds in Utah, and we've been growing heirloom seeds of uh, wheatgrass, kamut. They came from the Egyptian tombs. The mother of wheatgrass gave that to my business partner. Um, uh, her name's Ann Wigmore. And so uh, we've been growing uh, that for 30 years. We sprout it, juice it, and dry it on the farms. And then it comes as a powder into our factory in Compton, California. So from our farms directly to your uh, family, it's a vertically integrated company. And again, we've been doing this for 30 years and we are the source, the manufacturer and the distributor of these products. Not too many companies can say that. We also went plastic free in 2021. Um, so we took, uh, uh, we're like 99.9% .9 plastic free. Um, and so the, some of our labels are still uh, printed um, on material. Um, but uh, we have the only food grade compostable bag made out of hemp, tree sap, and bamboo. And they're called Terra Pouches. And so all of our superfood drinks come in there. We have a juice bar in the bag that has aloe vera juice. We have a beet juice for pre-workout with ashwagandha and rhodiola. Uh, we have uh, our liquid sunshine uh, power shake, which is uh, wheatgrass, spirulina, activated barley, all sprouted, gluten-free. Um, then we have... Uh, an aloe digest, which cleans out the gut. We've got a bio fruit with cranberry and pomegranate. So it's good for the urinary tract. And so really good stuff. We have to remember that the father of modern day medicine simply said, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Hippocrates said that in the third century BC. And we have gotten so far away from what real food is. But when we go back to natural and herbs are foods, right? We've got vitamin C from nature. And most people are buying some form of uh, supplementation. But well, these are all food grade. And so a very unique company, been around for a very long time. And uh, I'm sure uh, we'll give you a discount code if any of your viewers uh, would like to try out those products. And you can live on these superfoods. You know, I, I, I recommend a basic kind of paleo-esque kind of uh, eating diet, farmer direct, whole foods, you can also prep these. They uh, are dehydrated. They last up for up to a minimum of two years. And so, uh, and it's all, you know, farmer direct guaranteed organic certification from quality, um, quality assurance and our USDA uh, certification is on all, all of our products as well. And so, and I have, I'll end with this. I have an ultimate lifestyle transformation and my average client loses 25 pounds in the first 30 days. It's a basic juice fast. And uh, my athletes gain muscle. So it's not about weight loss. It's about clearing out the junk. And so, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the superfood company I partnered with. And then I have a coaching program called Fit and Free, the Legacy Method. I do believe it's very important for men to have a legacy a dream, a purpose. Otherwise they go in circles and can drive themselves crazy and get caught up in <laughs> addiction, <laughs> alcoholism and drugs. And so I know, cause I've been there. Lots of different forms of addiction, <laughs> right? Mine was work. That was my big one, but uh, definitely one. So I'll put the link in there for your coaching program as well. And the, uh, the Perium now, are the supplement, the herbs are, is it just available as like the cleanse program or is it all a cart as well? Yep. All a okay, cart. Cool. We got, cool. I think we have multiple, uh, lifestyle transformations. We've got a performance pack for athletes. We've got a collagen pack for people that want to build the collagen back up in their body. Um, and so, uh, 99% of our, uh, products are, uh, plant-based. Our super life formula has velvet deer antler. And our joint flex has green lip muscle. And so, uh, but they're micronutrition. What I teach people is, you know, your macros, you're going to want to get from your local farm farmer and your micros, you're going to want to get from herbs, barks, berries, roots. We used to hunt and gather. So what were we gathering? And so these types of materials, whatever the body can break down and absorb. And, uh, you know, I've been taking herbs for, uh, 33 years and, <laughs> 
I still hear it from people like herbs don't work. Fasting doesn't work. Juicing doesn't work. Okay. I've been doing all that for 33 years and my tissue uh, as I approach 60, I like my tissues, you know, I like my hair, you know, <laughs> so nothing's perfect, but I definitely stay energized as much as possible. A hundred percent. Thank you, Troy, so much for making the time. I mean, I'm looking at my list here of notes of topics and didn't even begin to scratch the surface here. So guys, definitely uh, give Troy a follow, check out his work on Instagram. I have the comedy shows uh, linked in the description and all the links that we talked about of this podcast. So check it out. Troy, thank you again. And I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Awesome. God bless. Thanks, Sam.